Beginning any weight loss journey is difficult enough. But when you see more hair than normal clinging to your clothes, tangling in your brush, and coming out when you shampoo, it can be alarming and extremely scary. Tune into today's episode to learn how to lose weight without losing your hair. Hello, thank you for listening to Thyroid Hair Loss Connection Podcast, a science-based, honest, candid conversation about how your thyroid affects your hair. You will learn practical solutions to hair growth, healing your thyroid, and balancing hormones with holistic nutrition approach and the latest treatments. Your hosts, me, Natalia Sanzo, a registered dietitian, aka Nashville Thyroid Expert, and Kimberly Vaughn, a board-certified trichologist, hair loss specialist, and coach. To stay up to date on the latest topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We also cannot do this without you. Send us a question to the link below and tune in each week for the answers. Now, let's head to the show. Kimberly, we will be talking about two sensitive subjects today, Mm -hmm. weight loss and hair loss. The good news is that sudden hair loss resulting from weight loss doesn't mean it will be ongoing or permanent, right? To help you guys sort it all out, let's talk about why weight loss may lead to hair loss and approaches you can implement today to prevent hair loss during your weight loss journey. Now, how does weight loss lead to hair loss? Going on the latest crash diet you saw on TikTok may seem like a good idea at the time until you see an alarming amount of hair coming out in the shower. Unfortunately, fat diets, crash diets, or restrictive dieting are known to wreak havoc on hair. Why is it? The answer to this is actually fascinating and even has a nifty scientific name, Telogen effluvium. Kimberly, since (laughs) you're the expert on this topic, can you explain exactly what TA, telogen effluvium, means and how does it happen? I'm so glad you asked. And how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Good, good. Oh, yes. Wow. Um, You know, it's, it's a shame because when you think about weight loss, I mean, you know, many individuals struggle and battle with this day in and day out. And when you add the hair loss component, it's just so disheartening because you start to feel better because the weight is coming off and you feel more energetic and you feel proud of yourself. And then all of a sudden the hair starts falling out too. And so it's a real challenge. So to answer your question though, Telogen effluvium, or TE, as we refer to it in um, the trichology world, is a temporary form of hair loss, and it's typically caused by a stressor or a change to the body. So in our clinic, first, though, we need to determine which type of TE or telogen effluvium that the client is suffering from. So Weight loss, right, if someone truly is just going on a crash diet, losing a lot of weight, their effluvium is typically categorized as acute telogen effluvium. That means that due to the change in the body, due to the change in the diet, the the body is trying very hard to maintain itself and to keep our vital, vital organs moving and functioning properly. The hair gets left aside. And so typically this acute telogen effluvium will last fewer than six months. Many times it will also start anywhere from, gosh, we've seen it happen as long as six months after a stressor. But depending upon the aggressiveness of the weight loss, it can happen as soon as 30 days in. And typically what will happen is as your hair begins to shed, you could see that you are losing up to 10% to 30, 40% during this aggressive shed phase. Um, When this happens, though, we know it's a really tough time. Um, However, you need to make sure that it's truly based upon this acute 
hair loss. Because if there's other contributing factors outside of the weight loss, meaning your levels, your labs are out of line, you are you know, maybe developing some type of diabetes or a sugar issue. So all of those things need to be taken to consideration as well. But typically, if it's truly just pointed to the diet, then acute telogen effluvium, after the shedding slows down, which can take months, the hair will return back to its normal growing state. Now, if we talk about chronic telogen effluvium, that's a whole different deal. It can truly last for much longer. Um, six months, nine months is typically what we see. It affects your entire scalp and may not have a clear cause. So you may lose your hair in handfuls during the early stages of this chronic telogen effluvium, but you won't become to where you totally are feeling like that you're moving into an alopecia universalis or totalis situation. The condition is certainly extreme and it's very, very challenging and devastating to those who are affected. And so once again, if you've been losing your hair for many months and you're really unsure what's going on, you very well could be going into a chronic telogen shed and you definitely need to seek professional help from a hair loss specialist. Kimberly, thank you for explaining what telogen effluvium is and means. So basically when your body undergoes a shock to its system, such a drastic fat, um, fast weight loss, it can send more of your hair into telogen state, meaning that the number of hair follicles that are producing hair growth diminishes greatly. This is in turn leads to shedding, right? This shedding can happen all over your scalp, like like you talked about, but typically starts in the area that are predisposed to balding already, right? Such as at the top of your head. And unfortunately, this can lead to patchy balding. Now, let's bring Hashimoto's into the mix, which is an autoimmune form of hypothyroidism, right? And 90% of people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's. And s since it is an autoimmune thyroid disease, Many people already experience nutrient deficiencies in iron, vitamin D, B12, which all play a role in hair health. So Hashimoto warriors, you, all, you already have this going for you, right? And then you add a crash or restrictive diets that are often based on drastically, drastically restricting calories, which unfortunately might, uh, might also deprive your body of important vitamins and nutrients, leading to nutrient deficiencies that can negatively affect hair growth cycles. For example, some weight loss diets with severe calorie restrictions can result in an iron deficiency, which can be related to hair loss. Additionally, restrictive diets can also result in zinc deficiency, which can be related to brittle hair and hair loss, lack of protein, selenium, and essential fatty acids also have been linked to hair loss. In addition to those vitamins and minerals I already mentioned, some of the other important nutrients for your scalp and hair includes vitamin B5, 6, 9, 12, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D3, vitamin E, and biotin. And while you should strive to incorporate foods in your diet that contain the above vitamins and minerals, sometimes supplements may be necessary to replenish the low levels and improve or correct deficiencies. So let's talk about how to prevent and or fix hair loss when you are on the weight loss journey. It helps to understand that healthy hair depends on several things, eating a well-balanced diet to get enough calories and nutrients, increase blood supply to the scalp to st stimulate new hair growth, manage uh, or managing physical and emotional stress, and seeing your doctor about any underlying medical conditions. It's important to consider working with a registered dietitian, shameless plug-in, like me, because I can closely monitor your diet to ensure you're getting the proper nutrients. In the case of hair loss, I check that your diet has the protein it needs to keep your hair healthy. 
all too often fad diets pro- promise quick results, which may or may not transpire, but they're often at the cost of good nutrition. And in many cases, this close vigilance of your nutrients can offset hair loss as we're able to make tweaks as we go. And at the first sign of hair loss, we can change the course. We can do this through your diet and through supplements. Mm. That's such a great idea. Um, And there's so many, oh gosh, weight loss, crash diet, keto this, keto that, and I'm certainly not knocking keto. I'm just, it was the first one because it seems to be the first one we all see when we're searching Google for anything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just so important that the listener realize that there is proper ways to lose weight. Absolutely. And, you know, I, there's not one best diet to lose weight and to keep hair from falling out, but as a dietitian, I can help you to, for example, if you want to get on a keto diet, it's okay. I will make sure that that keto diet provides all the nutrients you need for your, not just your hair, for your energy levels, for your sleep quality, for your skin. So we can work around any diet you bring into me. So exactly. So it doesn't matter which diet you want to follow. We just need to make sure that it supplies enough nutrition to support your lifestyle and your hair. Now, if you choose to lose weight on your own, it's important to understand that getting the right amount of nutrition is so important, right? When intentionally losing weight, people sometimes reduce calories and protein intake too much, which may lead to what? Hair loss. Nutrients that can help hair health and and growth include your protein, biotin, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, iron, and essential fatty acids. Here are some nutrient-rich foods to help supply the vitamins, amino acids, and other nutrients your hair needs. These foods include our spinach, sweet potatoes, avocados, walnuts, almonds, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and my favorite, berries. I also recommend eating 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. Pair it with a food that is high in vitamin C and an item that is high in iron for better absorption. For example... Include high vitamin C vegetables like peppers, cauliflower, broccoli in a spinach salad and don't shy away from fats as the human body needs healthy sorts of fat such as avocado, nut butters and olive oil to effectively absorb those fat soluble vitamins. And so now let's talk about what foods provide protein and we're talking about complete proteins. Those are beans, nuts, and seeds, even soy products, guys. And if you have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, there is absolutely no reason to stay away from soy. Just make sure it's whole food and that the soy products are organic. And other sources of protein include nut butters, uh, tempeh, which is naturally actually gluten-free, and quinoa, my favorite gluten-free, naturally gluten-free food. Now let's talk about iron-rich foods because we know how important iron is in uh, in the health uh, in the growth of your hair. Those include those foods include spinach, legumes, green peas, and chia seeds. Another important factor we need to talk about is how fast you lose the weight. Very strict low-calorie diet requires enormous amount of concentration planning and self-control. All of this brings unnecessary stress into your already hectic life. In fact, guys, you know, studies found that monitoring your diet increases perceived psychological stress and hence increases cortisol levels. Remember that cortisol is not just a stress hormone. It has other functions in the body. For example, It increases your blood sugar, reduces inflammation, suppresses the immune system, and takes part in nutrient metabolism. 
In fact, cortisol stimulates your fat and carbohydrate metabolism, creating a surge of energy in your body. While this process is essential for survival situations, right, it also increases your appetite, potentially leading to inability to lose weight or even weight gain. Additionally, elevated cortisol levels can cause cravings for sweet, fatty, and salty foods, which again will lead to inability to lose weight or even weight gain. So what's the solution? Keep your cortisol levels at bay. Avoid crash and restrictive diets and aim to lose a healthy amount of weight at a slow but steady pace, which is about one to two pounds per week. Uh, I think it's a good goal for most people. And finally, we have to talk about the hair care during your weight loss journey. And actually, as a matter of fact, at any point, Kimberly, you always advise our listeners and your clients to follow a, what, a five-step process. I think it's clean, stimulate, detoxify, stimulate again and moisturize. <laughs> moisturize. Can you elaborate a little bit um, on this for our listeners? Oh, of course. I'm so glad you asked. So... You know, I think it's really important for everyone to try to understand the importance of your scalp care first and then your hair care second. Um, and this is certainly for those individuals who are having any issues with thinning of the hair, fine hair, scalp irritation, um, and, you know, obviously any form of irritation across the skin. And so, yes, Natalia, you are exactly right. We do break this down in a, a simple five-step optimal scalp care program. The first is to clean. And it's really, really important that we understand cleaning our scalp is very different than cleaning our hair. The other thing I want you to understand is this, is that if you are shampooing the scalp, think about it. If you're standing in the shower, and we know gravity runs down, word, right? So if you do a great job on cleansing your scalp with a proper scalp cleansing treatment, that product is going to run down into the rest of the hair and cleanse the hair. So many times, you know, when we meet with clients, our first 30-day regimen includes shampooing daily. And for those of you listeners who have listened to us before, you know that Natalia and I go back and forth on this one. However, she was a very good student for the first 30 days and did just as we directed. And that's what we're going to share with anyone is for the first 30 days, you have to cleanse the scalp. By doing that, it doesn't mean that you have to then completely shampoo the long hair that's extending from the scalp. So for those of you listeners that have long hair and it's extending below the ear level, think about this. When you're cleansing the scalp, you're getting a fresh feel and a fresh fragrance as well to the scalp and to the hair. It doesn't mean that you have to go through the full process of cleansing the hair and then re-moisturizing and conditioning the hair itself. So step one, proper cleaning. Step two is stimulate. And we talk about stimulating through massaging the scalp during your shampoo. And, and certainly we would love for you to do it a second time throughout the day. But one of the issues is we find very poor circulation in the scalp. And so if we can speed up the circulation of the blood flow and the oxygen flow, we find that we see, one, much improved hair growth, two, a much healthier, tender scalp that is now available to absorb products if we're moving into an actual treatment phase. So make sure that you use the the pads of your fingers to perform the stimulation when you're shampooing. Three, and also very important, detoxify. So what we mean by that is clean off the debris that's on the scalp, such as you think about when our skin starts to turn over cells. The same thing happens on our scalp. The problem is, is typically we haven't been directed or educated on truly how to remove this debris gently so that we don't cause breakage at the scalp line. So detoxifying is very important. At HPI, we perform a detoxifying treatment before most all of our clinical scalp treatments and hair growth treatments. 
We also perform stimulating scalp treatments as well to help speed up that circulation and that stimulation. Hence, number four is stimulate again. And so it is so important that we allow room for this stimulate point um, on point number two and point number four, because stimulating the scalp multiple times a day is extremely important. The fifth and final is moisturize. So moisturize your scalp. And when we talk about moisturizing, we're not talking about utilizing a heavy, thick conditioner that you normally would use in a over-the-counter type conditioner that has a lot of oil, petroleum, or polymers. So we're talking about a moisturizer just for the scalp so that it truly adds that moisture back into the scalp And so that the area around each follicle has the proper nutrients and the proper moisture, alleviating the issue with all of that oil buildup and clogging the hair follicle. So just remember, it's simple. The first is to clean. The second is to stimulate. Third, detoxify. Fourth, my favorite, stimulate again. And then five, moisturize. Kimberly, those are such good steps in not only they clean your hair, they and take care of your scalp, but it's also almost like a stress relieving technique, right? That you can do every day. So there's no doubt that a healthy hair begins within. It begins with your diet, scalp hair, supplements, and of course, it's include managing physical, mental, and emotional stress. Guys, if you have been losing a lot of hair on your weight loss journey, you're experiencing seasonal hair loss or losing hair for unknown reasons, then speak to Kimberly and I today. You can find our contact information in the show notes. Guys, thank you for tuning in today and have a beautiful day. And until next time, make it a great hair day. Bye-bye.